I'm, for, I'm sure I know yesterday the par- parliament unanimously passed the uh, anti LGBTQ bill. That's right. There's a development this morning mm. that I just saw on the city news portal. Right. And I'm told the US embassy has issued um, a statement on has the bill. It? And I'm going to read it. Okay. So, <clears throat> Ghanaian parliament's passage of legislative of le- of legislation mm-hmm. undermines human rights. Matthew Miller is the department spokesperson. Says the United States is deeply troubled <laughs> by the Ghanaian <coughs> Parliament's passage of the legislation, officially called the Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill, which will threaten all Ghanaians' constitutionally protected freedoms of speech, press, and assembly. Mm. The bill seeks to criminalize any person who simply identifies as LGBTQ+, as well as any friend, family, or member of the community who does not report them. Limiting the rights of one group in a society undermines the rights of all. The United States echoes the call by those Ghanaians who have urged a review of the constitutionality of the bill to protect the rights of all individuals in Ghana. The bill will also undermine Ghana's valuable public health, media and civic spaces and economy. International business coalitions have already started stated that such discrimination in Ghana would harm businesses and economic growth in the country. Ghana's tradition of tolerance, peace, and respect for human rights is a source of stability and prosperity that has long served as a model for countries around the globe. This legislation is inconsistent with those values and will, and will if it becomes law, undermine this laudable tradition. Mm. Uh, I think we should take it one by one, Sky. So, yes, I don't know if you've seen the full bill. Um... This is not the first time we've heard this. The U.S. Vice President also came in to say this. We've heard Ghanaians mm. talk about this. For example, Audrey Gajako and a group of people have, have spoken a lot about the bill. From the portions of the bill you've seen, do you agree that there are human rights issues, there are challenges with the bill as is, which may need refinement if it is to pass at all? That's question one. Question two, do you, did you, do you see any issue with the procedure they used in in passing the bill mm-hmm. and by so doing do you foresee any legal problems because when I interviewed Afenio Marking he did say to me that he had wanted to remove the custodial sentence part of it mm-hmm. and he also felt that the bill was too heavy handed and that he felt that a lot of the MPs were not being bold enough to come out to speak about what they consider to be the heavy handed nature of the bill mm-hmm. but he would say what he would say so do you foresee any legal problems with the bill? And then finally, it's a three-one question. Mm. Uh-huh. What do you think is going to happen? Because the president has given indication that he will not sign all private members' bills. Some of them he would not sign. The witchcraft bill, we know he has not signed. And a couple others. So, But let's do question one first. The, the issue of what the U.S. government is saying, mm. what... Uh, some of the people who have spoken about the, the the bill have spoken. Do you see where they are coming from in terms of the human rights issues, the the violation of people's freedoms, and all of those things? Yes, Bernard, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, let me say that I'm a family man, and I'm happy <laughs> with that. But I'm also a lawyer, mm-hmm. and then I'm also a journalist. Mm-hmm. And then I'm also a traditionalist Mm -hmm. in the sense of belief in our cultural values and all of that. Mm -hmm. But in this particular case, respectfully, I wear the hat of a lawyer and also a journalist. Let me say from the outset that I do not for a moment engage in um, what the bail seeks to criminalize. I do not belong to that stalk. However, we live in a constitutional era and the constitution makes it clear that it is the supreme law of the land. Mm. If you read Article 1-2 of the constitution, the supremacy of the constitution is stated. And under Article 2-1, the constitution says that where any enactment or something done by a person, body, or institution under the constitution is deemed to be in conflict with the supreme law of the land. Mm. It is the mandate of 
the Supreme Court, in this case, under Article 130 mm -hmm. of the Constitution, or where appropriate when you go under Article 33 of the Constitution, mm -hmm. the High Court may make specific orders and declarations regarding what has been done and has been complained about. Mm -hmm. So that is the broad framework within which we'll tackle this matter. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the issues here? The framers of the Constitution, uh, the, the, the legislation we just passed parliamentary scrutiny, say that there are certain practices that are alien to Ghanaian culture. Mm -hmm. They are unacceptable. They are not moral. Mm -hmm. And within that context, they propose the legislation to parliament, mm -hmm. taking advantage of a new dispensation under Ghana's parliamentary mm -hmm. democracy, mm -hmm. which private allows democracy. private mm -hmm. members to, mm -hmm. you know, propose bills and have them passed into law. Mm -hmm. Mind you, previously, the position from the chair in parliament had always been that, look, these bills would impose, uh, what do you call it, Cost. charges or costs on the public pay. So they, they avoided it entirely. Mm -hmm. But Professor Michael Quay, the venerable uh, former speaker of parliament, thought that, look, we needed a new thinking. And I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was in, in, in keeping with that, that the framers uh, of this bill we're talking about took the bill to parliament. It went through all the stages and yesterday it was passed into law. Now, to respond to Bernard's question, the question is whether parliament as constituted under a constitutional democracy mm -hmm. has the authority to pass a law criminalizing sexual relations. Now, there are two schools of thought. The first one, which I belong to, is that Parliament, while it has the powers to pass laws under Article 106, 108, and respect and other you know, constitutional uh, provisions, it does not, in my respectful view, have the authority to pass a law criminalizing sexual relations. And I'm going to say why I believe so. Because there are a number of provisions in the Constitution that deal with liberty that deal with privacy, that deal with, um, what do you call it, um, uh, respect for dignity, and all kinds of things. And I can talk about Article 12, Article 14, Article 15, Article 17, Article 18, Article mm -hmm. 21 mm -hmm. of the Constitution. But the key to unlocking why I believe that Parliament doesn't have the authority to do what it did uh, in terms of human rights violation is under Article 33.5 of the Constitution. Now, that provision... With your permission, let me just read it for our listeners. 33.5. Yeah, I think 33.5 of the Constitution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's on the protection of rights by the court. All right. Uh, it says, and I quote, five, the rights, duties, declarations, and guarantees relating to the fundamental human rights and freedoms specifically mentioned in this chapter shall not mm -hmm. be regarded as excluding others not specifically mentioned which are considered to be inherent in a democracy and intended to secure mm -hmm. the freedom and dignity of So the you're world. saying that there are some rights not explicitly stated but still have to be guaranteed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go through the Constitution, there are many rights guaranteed by the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Now, this provision, in my respectful view, is saying that the list is not exhaustive and that to the extent that there are those other rights that are needed in a democracy as to ensure or guarantee the freedom and dignity of man, mm. it should be possible to uphold those, mm. given the constitutional architecture that we run. Now, we are aware that Article 17 of the Constitution imposes some restrictions when it comes to um, what you call it, how much you can go with legislating for rights and all of that. Mm -hmm. And again, with your respect, in, 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 uh, with respect, let me just refer to that uh, article provision 17 article 17 it mm -hmm. says that all persons shall be uh, you know equal before the law that's clause one but the relevant one clause four says nothing in this article shall prevent parliament from enacting laws that are reasonably necessary to provide a for the implementation of policies and programs aimed at redressing social, economic, and educational imbalance in the Ghanaian society, which is not particularly relevant. Mm. B, for matters relating to adoption. Now, adoption is key here because the, the bill is talking about people who are gay, mm. they cannot adopt children, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Marriage, 
divorce, burial, devolution of property on death or other matters and, and go. So the relevant right one here is adoption, marriage, and divorce. Now, if you look at the bill, the bill says what? If you are gay or lesbian, you cannot adopt a child because you are likely to transfer, in essence, your, your views, your morals and everything on, exactly to the mm -hmm. child. Mm -hmm. And they don't want that. Now, the question that we should ask is whether merely because a person is gay or lesbian, he does not have the capacity to raise a child and provide love and affection to that child. That is a, a strong argument that can be made in a court of law as to ask whether merely because you are gay, you are not entitled to affably taking care of a child. That, that's, that's a major issue. And then also, if you go to C, it says that for the imposition of restrictions um, on the acquisition of land, no, no, this is not particularly yeah, not, uh, yeah. relevant. Now, so you have done so, 33, you've done uh -huh, 17. Uh -huh. So the argument I'm making is that for those people who believe that Parliament doesn't have the authority. Mm -hmm. The concession has got to be made. Sorry, explain. If you say they don't have the authority, are you saying that you, let me just, the Parliament has authority to pass a law that regulates sexual sexual yeah. conduct? Mm -hmm. So how come our pre criminal code already criminalizes um, same sex relations, same sex sex and unnatural canon knowledge? Conduct. That's already there, right? Yeah. So the history of the criminal code is another matter. It was formed or framed long before the constitution came into force and it is the case that when the constitution came into force you know it 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 it, it allows some of these laws to stay on but repeatedly people have challenged martin pebu for instance has challenged many provisions in that particular legislation which have been struck down my i do not know of any action in the supreme court challenging the provision on a natural calendar knowledge but the argument has always been made that if you look at Article 33 of the Constitution, 33.5, mm -hmm. the provision questioning on natural canal knowledge may not stand the te test of Supreme Court scrut scrutiny. Fair. But when you say that some people, you said there were two schools of thought. Mm -hmm. One was that Parliament does not have the authority to pass a law that criminalizes sexual activity in a sense that the, it will be unconstitutional. Yes. Not that they don't have the... So they can pass it, but the, the Supreme Court will declare it unconstitutional. Yes. Not like Parliament can pass any law. Because yes. if you, the way you framed it, it suggested like Parliament have been proscribed from passing certain laws. No, you see... That, Do you understand uh, what I'm saying? Yeah. You're saying that they can pass the law, mm. but to the extent that the law is inconsistent uh, incons with the Constitution, that law will be voided. Yeah. And that will have to be determined by the interpreters of the law. Uh -huh. There's a reason I frame it like that. If you, you, you can have the power to do something, mm -hmm. which is jurisdiction, if you act outside that power, it is taking as though you do not have the power to have what you have. But the question is, what is a crime? Who determines what a crime is? Is it, the, the, is it, is it not the, the, you see, the parliament can de determine what is a crime. I'm not saying, I, do you understand To the extent it is not inconsistent with the provisions of the constitution. Good. And so that's that's my point. So if if the does the constitution explicitly state what a crime is? No. The what is a crime? A crime is behavior that is considered to be um, basically unacceptable, or which is injurious to another. Do uh -huh. you get it? Uh -huh. And that is based on values, mores. Is based on what is socially acceptable mm -hmm. ethics. Mm -hmm. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying that the the legislature. Mm -hmm. generally mm -hmm. have the power to make laws. Yeah. Those laws have to be consistent with the constitution. Yes. So they have to be taken together. Yes. Uh -huh. So when you say that the school of thought is that parliament does not have the power mm -hmm. to yes. make laws that legislate on people's sexual, sexual conduct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that the, the, sen the way you frame the sentence can be misleading. Which no. is why I'm saying that I understand. If you, you, need to, you need to qualify that in what you just said to me first. No, you see, I situated that argument within the framework of Article 33.5 mm -hmm. to say that, yes, there are rights recognized expressly in the Constitution, yeah. but there are also silent rights, mm -hmm. which inherently, within the meaning of Article 33.5, are there, except that you cannot see them feeling fee yeah, that. So that's in the, in the bosom of the court. Uh -huh. It's not in the bosom of the speaker or in the bosom of... Because if you see, you, you are saying there are, there, are, there are so many rights in the world. Animals have rights, humans have rights, all kinds of rights. So uh -huh. if those rights are not explicitly stated, uh -huh. 
it is the somebody has to come out and say that this is a right that is being violated. But brother, you see, you are taking the argument and making isolation. When okay. I started, I talked spoke to you about the, the supremacy of the constitutional article one. Yeah. Then I spoke about the power of the Supreme Court. If you read together uh, Article Two One mm. together with Article One Three Zero of the Constitution to strike down a legislation deemed to be unconstitutional. Mm. Now, when they make that pronouncement. It is a definite declaration that you do not yes. have the power to do Fair that. Enough. So, but your, your point is that we've, we haven't reached there yet. Yes. Now, you are saying that to the extent that the Constitution guarantees rights which are both explicit and not stated, mm -hmm. this law, mm -hmm. when tested against that 33, mm -hmm. could mm -hmm. be considered a violation. Yes. I think that point is fair. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the other point is, has anybody sent the matter yet so we we've not we've not we've not reached there mm -hmm. parliament has done what they have to do or what they want to do mm -hmm. it will it will have to be sent to court for somebody to then tell the supreme court that this particular law mm. violates such and such provision for which reason it should be declared unconstitutional yeah good but i was asking you whether so that that point has to be made that mm. until it gets to the supreme court the law is there mm -hmm. what else in the law is problematic you've already explained the issue of the rights, mm -hmm. but is that the only issue with that? You, you explain the right and also the adoption, the yeah. discrimination part. Is yeah. there anything else defective with the law as is? Okay, so to address that, let's go to, for instance, the bit about journalists, if you mm -hmm. promote or people who are into advocacy, if you mm -hmm. provide funding for a particular group that is interested in mm -hmm. pursuing, or maybe people are, um, are suffering from all kinds of things, discrimination, and you want to support their cause, merely because they are associated with a certain mm -hmm. sexual um, orientation, yeah. the view so of the law promotion, promotion yeah, of is that you are funding mm -hmm. a prohibited activity. Mm -hmm. I take the view that that is completely unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And many people agree with that. Of course, there are people who take the other view. Mm -hmm. The reason is that, first of all, Bernard, mm -hmm. in this country, it, pro it was previously not allowed mm -hmm. for us to, to speak against colonial authority within this jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. The Bixes were sent to jail because they were rising up against what they considered completely unacceptable within our context, that we were capable of taking, a, taking care of ourselves. But it took protests, it took agitation, it took writing in the newspapers for there to eventually be a change from the old ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. So this particular legislation is saying that, hey, to the extent that you are going to deal with any matter con 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 concerning gays and lesbians, mm -hmm. you cannot say that on radio. You cannot do that on radio to the extent it is considered a promotion okay. of that conduct. Okay. You understand? Okay. And, 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 and that is difficult for me. I think that infringes the right to free expression in my respectful view. Do you have the explicit um, provision on the reporting or promotion so that is it being construed rightly? Because I've heard people, a lot of people, have, in fact, when I interviewed Apenyo Maki, also said that you, the media, have to even look at this law well because there's actually, he said, they remove criminal libel law. Mm -hmm. So to criminalize coverage or promotion of sexual orientation or people who are deemed to be promoting something, he's surprised that the media hasn't come out to even speak about it. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was asking if it's if if the, if the construction mm -hmm. because the the the, portion, the versions of what I've seen have never been the final version. So I'm mm -hmm. not and don't forget the president said to Kamala Harris that he's asked the AG to tidy up the, the law. Mm -hmm. So I haven't actually seen the final final version mm -hmm. to know what they actually say. Mm -hmm. do, do you get me? So if you could pull out so you see, pull it out what first. happened yesterday, the original version um, of the bill mm -hmm. under clause 13 mm -hmm. talks about prohibition of propaganda, of promotion of an advocacy for activities directed at a child. That's one. Mm -hmm. Then there's another one, prohibition of funding or sponsorship for prohibited activities, which I also talked about. That's under 14, right? Uh, clause 14 of the bill. Mm -hmm. um, the one in connection with the um, prohibition of propaganda, if you go back to mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it, clause mm -hmm. um, 
plus plus 11. Mm -hmm. So he says, uh, clause 12 actually, it talks about prohibition of propaganda, promotion of advocacy for activities prohibited under mm -hmm. this act. It says, a person, mm -hmm. I know that according to what, what, what happened in parliament yesterday, mm -hmm. they introduced another amendment which subjected this provision to the constitution. Mm -hmm. But in my respectful view, I do not think that that cures the mischief inherent in so read that that. provision. It me. says that a person who, A, through media, mm -hmm. technological platform, mm. technological account, or mm. any other means produces, procures, markets, broadcasts, mm -hmm. disseminates, mm -hmm. publishes, mm -hmm. or distributes, or B, uses an electronic device, mm -hmm. the internet service, a film, or any other device, right, capable of electronic storage or transmission to produce, procure, market, broadcast, disseminate, publish, or distribute a material for purposes of promoting an activity prohibited under this act, commits an offense, and is liable on summary conviction to a term, and he goes on to deal with it. Now, mm. if you read this provision, who is to tell me that if a group of people are demonstrating in maybe uh, uh, yeah, in some place on, uh, at circle, a uh, circle, that this is that they believe that they identify with these people, mm -hmm. and that they want the state of Ghana to extend fair, you know, legislative coverage to them, mm -hmm. constitutional protection to them. You, Caleb, you go there, you go and interview them. Because that is what they believe. And the constitution guarantees that they have the right to demonstrate, mm. to associate with people they believe they want to associate with. And if you cover you it. Co you cover that. So you come to put go it Go back to the construction. So the construction says what? Promote. I want to just... So if you cover a story of people does protesting... That, does it amount maybe they to having a, they're having a, a demonstration mm -hmm. of whatever they call it. Maybe. Yeah, they say that, yes, they are being discriminated against. They are they, 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 they are not giving them rights under the constitution. They no, I want to hear the construction again. Okay. It says that mm -hmm. a person who, and I'm talking about clause 12, mm -hmm. of course, is, is, is being subjected now to the constitution with some amendments. Mm -hmm. Through media, mm -hmm. technological platform, mm -hmm. technological account, mm -hmm. or any other means, mm -hmm. produces, produces, procures, procures markets, markets, broadcasts, broadcasts disseminates, disseminates, establishes, establishes or, distributes, or distributes, or or B, mm -hmm. uses an electronic device, mm -hmm. the internet service, mm -hmm. a film, mm -hmm. or any other device capable of electronic storage mm -hmm. or transmission mm -hmm. to produce, produce procure, procure, market, market broadcast, broadcast, disseminate, disseminate publish, publish distribute. or distribute. Mm -hmm. A material for purposes of promoting, right? That, so a material yeah. for purposes of promoting. Of, of promoting. An activity prohibited under this act, <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. Commits an offense and is liable on summary, then it goes on. So how does covering a demonstration amount to procuring, promoting an activity prohibited by uh -huh. this act? So he, that's, that's where the catch is. Because if you look at it, what, what is the reason they are in the streets? They are in the streets because they want to promote their interests. Mm -hmm. They believe that the constitution grants them specific rights, which rights are being taken away from them by either section, a certain section of the society mm -hmm. or an institution of state, mm -hmm. parliament, or maybe the courts or the presidency. Yeah. It could be anybody or even a private office holder who says that as for my office, I'm not going to employ people of a certain sexual orientation. And you are saying that if we broadcast that activity based on your understanding of the law, yeah. we will be construed to have violated the law. In my respectful view, to oh, the yeah. extent that to you are listening. lifting their voice, amplifying the concerns they are raising mm -hmm. and giving them a platform to ventilate their anger, it is my respectful view. People may disagree mm. that that amounts to promotion. So that provision, you think, gags the media? Yes, I think it is an unnecessary intrusion into media freedom, free speech, and it has got to be struck down. That is my respectful okay, view. Okay, let me go back to your first point and read a comment for you from somebody who says, Dear Bernard, 
and team. If you look critically at their rights guaranteed under our constitution, mm. list not exhaustive though, mm. one would come to the realization that this these are rights universally accepted, rights to life, etc. It is my view that the intention of the constitutional provision is to protect such universal rights. Can we describe LGBT as a universal right? Why is UN, US, UK uh, uh, not pushing Saudi Arabia and the Muslim world to permit LGBT? If some people cannot be made to protect LGBT rights, same cannot be forced on others. It then means it's not a universal right. The Western world cannot force us to accept what they think suits their system. If we are not careful in the near future, people will start walking on the streets naked, maybe coming to your studio naked because they say it is their right to wear, not to wear anything. This nonsense <laughs> must stop. <laughs> if it is not universally accepted, we have no business subjecting ourselves to the influence of any foreign power. KGB. Now, the question I want to ask is in relation to what you said about the Constitution 33, mm. where you said, it says there are some rights that have not been explicitly stated. Mm -hmm. This person's argument is that he believes that those rights are universal in nature and not very particular. So, how do you think this will be treated? So, for example, a right, is sexual orientation a right? Or sexual practice? So, a right? Yeah, so in, 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 in many international forums, mm -hmm. the view being taken is that these are new rights mm -hmm. and have got to be respected. Mm -hmm. Ghana is a signatory to a number of international treaties, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some of which enjoin us mm. to eschew uh, discrimination, mm -hmm. ensure protection for all and, 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 and all of that. Mm -hmm. Now, the question or the test that would have to be passed for there to be a judicial pronouncement to say that mm -hmm. these new rights come within the scope of Article 33.5, in my respectful view, mm -hmm. is whether these rights are necessary in the democracy for the protection of those, 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 those people that I talk about in reference to Article 33.5. Read 33.5 again. 33.5. Mm -hmm. It says, the rights, duties, declarations, and guarantees relating to the fundamental human rights and freedoms specifically mentioned in this chapter shall not be regarded as excluding others not specifically mentioned, which are considered inherent in a democracy. Right? and intended to secure the freedom and dignity of man. Now, the question which you ask ourselves is whether in a democracy, mm -hmm. minority rights have got to be protected. That's a good question. But then somebody also say that sex, sex, certain sexual practices in their view violate human dignity. Mm -hmm. So because you've, you just read the whole thing, mm -hmm. you read the last part again. Mm -hmm. You said these rights are necessary in a democracy to secure the freedom and dignity. And dignity. Yes, I'm, I'm coming. So there are two words, freedom and dignity. And some of the arguments of those who are for the bill are saying, look, the practice of homosexuality mm -hmm. is, it undermines human dignity. Who's and the dignity? The, the, of society. If it's not, it's, it's about dignity of man. So the, the, the object in your view is the person. Yeah, the person. So the question is whether the person who is, in my respectful view, engaging in that conduct, Considers what he's doing, not in your face, but in the privacy of his home. It's good question. It's Whether that, that conduct yes. without more mm -hmm. undermines human dignity in his sense and in the sense of whoever is engaged. Does does the constitution make a provision for so social societal values or cultural values? Because oh, yeah. if you read the, the the law, they are basically talking about proper human rights and family values right? yeah. sexual rights and family whatever sexual values whatever yeah, is there anything that continues that says that laws must be aligned to certain cultural values or any because i i get the sense that when you listen to mm. all the promoters mm. they're saying that homosexuality and the manifestation of sin mm. is against our values and our cultural norms as a people yeah. All right, so I just want to understand from that perspective whether there is any is that some, is just a sentiment or is law? No, so there, there's a constitutional foundation for it. Uh -huh, if you go to Article 11 of the Constitution, mm -hmm. it tells us about the laws of Ghana, mm -hmm. and it includes customary law, mm -hmm. right? And we know that per custom, it is generally the position that certain types of sexual conduct are not accepted. Mm -hmm. 
Do you understand? Yeah. And to that extent, a person will be on firm grounds <laughs> when he argues that traditionally, within Ghanaian values, customary law, and all of that, mm -hmm. it is not accepted that certain things be done. You understand? Mm. Now, but the question is mm -hmm. whether customary law is superior to the constitution. Because Which is what I was asking about. Does the constitution make provision mm. for the role of culture and values? Directive principles of state policy have various provisions dealing with the need to protect you know, our cultural our values and, and all of that. I would have been happy to hear some because, okay. you know, you've made a constitutional argument mm -hmm. around the rights. Mm -hmm. And don't forget when Kamala Harris came and said it was a human rights issue, mm -hmm. some people took her on. Yeah. Because they say it's not a human rights issue. Mm -hmm. It is a choice people make and it's a values issue. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So those opposing the bill pull it to the human rights side. Mm -hmm. Those supporting the bill pull it to the cultural value side. Yeah. So if you've made a constitutional defense of the human rights part, mm -hmm. I think it's only fair for you to also look at what the constitution says about values and how they they regulate our conduct in the democracy. Mm -hmm. Do you me? So it's a very dicey um, point. You, the, 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 the directive principles of state policy are broad. Yeah, they are broad. Don't forget, we are told they are not justiciable. Mm -hmm. So that no, they are justiciable. Has that been proven in the court? Position of the law. No, in, even in, even in, even in economics. The, the position of the law has shifted, but there are specific nuances to it. Yeah, because, Sky, I, I, for as long as I've known, yes. if directives of state policy were justiciable, there are a number of economic issues that will be taken to court. The current position of the law, as I understand it, mm -hmm. with great respect, mm -hmm. is that they are justiciable, but there are specific nuances to Okay, it. by which we mean, for example, they will say the uh, government, uh, um, the economic policy mm -hmm. must be done in such a way mm -hmm. that it has not disadvantaged any particular group. Mm. Okay. That's the direction of state policy. It's like a principle that undermines your policy. So you can't have a policy that discriminates against say, Fulanis mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a group. So justiciability means you can take that to court and say, yeah. this policy discriminates against me and therefore mm -hmm. I want it to be reversed. That's mm -hmm. what we mean by justiciability. Mm -hmm. Now, Sky is saying that in his view, they are justiciable, but with some nuances. We don't want to enter those technicalities. Mm -hmm. What I wanted him to establish for me was whether the issue around culture and values, because when yeah, listening so to the... Let me take you to yes. Article 39. 39, okay. It says, subject... One says, subject to clause two of this article, the state shall take steps to encourage mm -hmm. the integration of appropriate customary values. Well, so, repeat. Repeat the whole 39. thing. 39. Mm -hmm. One. Mm -hmm. Subject to clause two of this article, mm -hmm. the state shall take steps mm -hmm. to encourage the integration of appropriate customary values mm -hmm. into the fabric of national life through formal and informal education mm -hmm. and the conscious introduction of cultural dimensions to relevant aspects of national planning. Mm -hmm. Two says... Mm -hmm. The state shall ensure that appropriate customary and cultural values are adapted and developed mm -hmm. as an integral part of the growing needs of the society as a whole. Mm -hmm. And in particular, that traditional practices which are injurious to the health and well-being of the person mm -hmm. are abolished. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So if you if you read, but it doesn't. I, I, you are right, I, but it doesn't say anything about cultural values in lawmaking. You see, you've mo you've mentioned in education, you've mentioned in in life. Yeah, I'm 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 trying to, I'm, I'm I'm trying to go somewhere with this. Yeah. On the human rights side, mm. you're saying that the constitution guarantees the rights of all, mm. including rights not to stated here. Mm. Now you're saying for cultural values and as well, mm -hmm. the the constitution says that we must explicitly ensure that the mm -hmm. values are integrated through education. Mm -hmm. Can that be construed to say that? In even making laws, mm. you must consider our cultural values and norms to the extent that it does not violate the tenets of a democracy. You are right in saying though, because Article 34 says that. Article 34 one mm -hmm. on directive principles of state policy says the directive principles of state policy contained in this chapter shall guide all citizens, mm -hmm. parliament, mm -hmm. the president, the judiciary, mm -hmm. the council of state, mm -hmm. the cabinet, okay. political parties, and you. other bodies and persons uh, in applying or interpreting the constitution okay. or any other law and in taking and implementing any policy uh, decisions okay. for the establishment of... And the, which means society. that the people promoting the law mm -hmm. can also come 
and say based on culture mm. uh, lgbtq no. is 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 not right based on their understanding of what culture that, that is, is fair, yeah. so i think the question now is the people who have the supreme court can then look at it and say look on the human rights side, on the culture side, mm. which one does the constitution give more weight to? Right. Exactly. I think that's where the argument yeah, lies. Right. Because Sky has proved to us that there are both human rights concerns that are yeah. valid, but there are also cultural, cultural concerns which are also equally valid. Yeah. So the constitution, the, the Supreme Court, then if somebody goes to court, based on what the person is asking for, mm -hmm. has to make a determination as to which one has more weight. Mm -hmm. And depending the on the question thing. being asked, mm -hmm. that if you put the LGBTQ law in the bosom of the constitution mm. and you shake it to the left and right on the beam balance will it shift left mm. culture or right, right lgbtq right. last point do you foresee a court case coming and do you think the president will wait mm. no, no do you see the president signing i i i cannot um go i'm not a clever one, right no no based on all you know about the, pa the past six months on what he's refused to sign uh -huh, okay yeah i'm just asking based on your parliamentary knowledge yeah so uh -huh. Uh -huh. so we, we know that he has refused to sign a the bill yeah, yeah. The witchcraft uh, you know there's a view that he signed some and then decided not to sign some mm -hmm. that matter is also something that should be litigated probably in the court mm -hmm. based on his history or what mm -hmm. he that uh, he his did, recent history uh, uh, his recent history I am I am I lean towards the view that he's unlikely to sign it. Mm. The reason is within the, the context of one of the arguments I've made. Mm -hmm. If you read Article 106 and 108 of the Constitution, they tell you how laws are supposed to be made. Mm -hmm. The provisions when you read them together say that when you want to impose a charge on the public press, mm -hmm. Those charges should not originate from a, a bail private member's that bill. is coming in from so a private So the president member. will use that to uh -huh. say so he's not going to sign. Exactly. Yeah. In my respectful view, he may. He may not even use the human rights yeah, argument. He may, okay. yeah, he he may, may also the... engage the human rights argument and say that, look, in his respectful view, he does not... Do we know that. if the AG's amendments were incorporated? Because when Kamala Harris asked him a question, he said he's given the law to the AG to look at mm. to make sure that it does not do what she says it's going to do mm -hmm. essentially mm -hmm. <laughs> right mm -hmm. so do we know what the ag said uh, so yesterday um there was an event we had with the attorney general i was pressing him to give us an interview on, on, this, on this matter he says that to the extent he's not seeing the bail in this current form you can't tell he's unlikely to so it, so to in terms of the sequence of our media work mm -hmm. we can ask the ag to find out from him whether his whether the law in his current state mm -hmm. is 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 in alignment with his recommendations that's number one mm -hmm. number two whether the president based on his recent history is likely to sign mm -hmm. number three whether somebody's minded to take, take the matter to court mm -hmm. on its human rights side and to test matter. its human rights versus cultural mm -hmm. points so there's a lot to to see yeah. is there a time limit for which the president has to sign this um so if you go to article 60 last one, it's the last one. Uh, <laughs> i know uh, let me see is Charlie, it? every question you ask i ask article, article Charlie, so, no. <laughs> hey, Charlie, bro, you, you may come for the long side oh hey. so, is it article 106 hey. 106 of the constitution clause yeah. 8 says that when the president refuses to assent to a bill mm -hmm. right he shall within 14 days after the refusal but they didn't tell him when he should, he should sign. So where a bill is passed by parliament, that's under clause 7 of um, 106. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's presented to the president for us and he shall signify within seven days mm -hmm. after the presentation to the speaker that he assents to the bill or that he refuses to assent to the bill unless the bill has been referred by the president to the Council of State under Article 90 of this constitution. So there are a number of things here. First, when it is presented, it is expected that if the president is happy with it within seven days, mm -hmm. he would have what? Um, signed. Signed it. But if he does not, within 14 days, he shall tell the parliament through the speech. So we have 21 days to find out. Uh, exactly. If he doesn't sign in seven days, he needs to do something in 14 yeah, days. That's right. But obviously, his signing can be arrested by a court case. Yeah, so if a person properly advised takes the matter to court and says that the president should be injuncted mm. from signing it, uh, of that course, changes the dynamics. Yeah, that changes the dynamics. And then also, let me say quickly before yes. we go. Yes, Yesterday, yes. in my respectful view, I think the parliament, although it says it wants to conduct its business lawfully, yes. misconducted what itself. Happened? In my respectful view. Two seconds. Two seconds. 
they did not satisfy the requirements of Article 104 which of the Constitution, which is on quorum. How many people were there? At least majority of MPs, about half of MPs ought to have been on the How floor. How many of them were there? In my respect, less than 50 members of parliament were on the floor. When the oh, so you mean that the things have, may have a problem with even... So there are three main issues. First, human rights. The second one, the, the procedure quorum matter. <laughs> and the third one, the, 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 whether 106, 108 properly construed can be, be the allowed them, uh, in public of a court. Bernard, public watch this piece. It's a good time to take a spot of music. We'll come back to our friends from the UK Alumni Awards. This is 